Hello, <laughs> my name is Arnold Brevik. I am the pastor at First Presbyterian Church in Northport, Florida. The topic of my message to you is Poor Brothers, and the passage of Scripture is Leviticus 25:35. If one of your brethren becomes poor and falls into poverty among you, then you shall help him like a stranger or a sojourner, that he may live with you. Leviticus 25, 35. What we have in Leviticus 25, 35 is a poor brother who you could say has reached the third stage of four stages of po poverty. The first stage is mentioned in verse 25 of Leviticus 25. The brother has lost property, and yet he still hopes to regain it. The second stage is mentioned in verse 28. He's lost the property and he still hopes to regain it, but not, not until the year of Jubilee when everything is returned. And then the third stage is the stage that's mentioned in our text. He has not just lost property, but he has fallen and is failing to the point that this brother, this poor brother, is no longer able to take care of himself and his family. The Hebrew literally means your brother's hand is shaking. He's weak or he has failed or he, his hand has decayed so that he no longer has power to get or keep wealth. Your brother has reached the Beatles stage of poverty. Help, I need somebody. Help, not just anybody. And he's coming to you. You're his rich brother who has a little bit more at least. What is communicated in Leviticus 25.35 is the opposite of what is communicated in Deuteronomy 8.18. And you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you power to give wealth. If we are going to help our poor brother, the first thing we need to do is, one, remember the Lord our God. If we have wealth as believers, it is because the Lord has blessed us. Psalm 103, Psalm 100, verse 3. Know that the Lord, He is God. It is He who has made us, and not we ourselves. We are His people and the sheep of His pasture. Remember God. We are not self-made men. He is the one that has made us. We're not better than somebody else because we have more money. Remember the pasture. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. He owns it. Everything we have is ultimately from him. If we have wealth, it is because he has blessed us. If someone else near us does not have it, it may be because he wants to test us. Think of Lazarus. The rich man had Lazarus as a near neighbor. He had opportunity, he had ability to help Lazarus, but he didn't. And so we read in Luke 16, 25, But Abraham said, Son, remember in your lifetime you received good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things, but now he is comforted and you are tormented. Proverbs 21, 13, Whoever shuts his ear to the cry of the poor will also cry himself and not be heard. Two, remember, your wealth is not yours. If we have wealth as believers, it is not our own. We are, we are not even our own. 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20. Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? Who is in you and, you and whom you have from God? And you are not your own. For you are bought at a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Now the principle of 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20 is applied here to sexual immorality, but the principle itself can be applied in broader ways. Uh, he owns us. He owns everything we have. Uh, he can tell us what to do with it. And in Leviticus uh, 25, 35, he does. It says, then you shall help him. Help is a broad term, a broad word, and it means help in whatever way he needs help, financially, with a place to stay, uh, with a job, whatever it means. 
there may be a deception here, you might think. Well, it says, like a stranger or a soldier, and we think sometimes we treat strangers differently. But the Lord says, Deuteronomy 10, 17 through 19, talks about how great a God he is. And then it says, in verse 18, he administers justice for the fatherless and the widows, and love is the stranger, giving him food and clothing. Therefore, love the stranger, for you are strangers in the land of Egypt. And so we're to love our brothers, give them food and clothing, just like we love the stranger. Number three, remember God's goal for us regarding the poor brother is that he may live with you. As it says, the last part of Leviticus 25, 35, that he may live with you. Meaning live among you as an equal, as a friend. It means he can hold his head up high. But it may mean too that he lives, actually live you literally in your house, eating your food till he gets up on his feet. I had this once. A man invited me into his home when I was in the circumstances where I really needed that help. I was welcomed as a friend. I did some chores at the farm that I was on. He, he, he polished my shoes one day. This is giving your brother help. Where we're giving your brother help is the opposite of stealing. The Westminster Shorter Catechism, question 74, says, What is required in the Eighth Commandment? The Eighth Commandment requires the lawful procuring and furthering of wealth and outward estate of ourselves and others. And one of the proof texts is Leviticus 25.35. It's the other's wealth that you're, you're helping. And how does this help it happen? Well, not like Adonai Bezek, Judges 1.7. 7. Seventy kids with their thumbs and big toes cut off used to gather the scraps, scraps under my tables. He fed them. He gave to them. But he had cut their own ability out from under them. That's not what we're called to do. No, Jesus, the good shepherd, uh, gives us the real example. And he says in John 10.10, 10, the thief does not come except to steal and to, to kill and to destroy. I have come that they might have life and they may have it more abundantly. That he may live among you, Leviticus 25, 35, means as a brother, as a friend, as an equal, not crawling for scraps under your table, but sitting at the table like a family member. God bless you.